During the latest waterborne escapade Alan dragged us along with him on, in the River Thames estuary and up into central London, I was rightly castigated by my human companions for installing an underperforming grab handle, the first of half a dozen or so planned to limit the number of unscheduled swims when navigating the exterior of Alan at sea. The handle was crap, and one of the worlds failed. So I've stumped up for some better quality ones, including a long one. They are stainless, but to match Alan's peerless outside aesthetic, I've used primer and black gloss to coat the ends. They also need wrapping. Steel is quite keen on conducting heat, and I'd rather this heat remains in my hand when in proper Arctic waters. The fastest solution, as I learned the slow, drippy and hard way when doing the internal hatch levers, is to get some quality shrink wrap and then shrink it to neatly cover the handle. This took ages, twice. Firstly because it was near impossible to get a tube that was wide enough to get around the circular brackets, yet narrow enough to shrink tightly around the steel. The second, taking ages, was the process of sliding the wrap along the handle. The further it went, the greater the friction, and getting around the obstacle at the end was counterproductive to my happiness. But I succeeded. The heat shrinkage excitement was undeniably easier, but here too, there were moments of adrenaline, a point at which win or lose depended entirely on my technique. Try as I might, I couldn't avoid the slightly wrinkly bunching as the wrap made its way around the bends. But anyhow, done. The short ones were considerably easier. This wrap, by the way, isn't the bristle, cheaper PVC version, but a polyolefin that's rated down into serious cold. The limited shrink ratio helped too, and I found the more you shrink these things down, the easier they crack. Maybe thermoplastic YouTube experts can say why. The span of this handle wasn't the same as the previous one, now known as sacked handle, so I had to fill the holes, touch up the paint, and re-drill for the new mounting bolts. But we'd already managed to slide grippy plastic onto an infuriatingly shaped handle that day, so an obstacle like this was child's play. One above, and one to the side, and as close to the hatch as I could get away with, as I want to keep that flat, near-vertical section free for highly important later additions. Done. I'm not reopening the solar saga just yet, but I do feel a sense of unfinished business and this footage was lurking sinisterly in my not yet used folder. So here it is. The solar cables, now of correct wider gauge, cross the shell spanning the outside of the railings. You'd usually be on the other side, but they need protecting anyhow. Time for conduit. I thought of a load of different ideas and I've chosen a section of tough, flexible, UV resistant PVC trunking that retains its shape when you stand on it and it needs sticking down. My initial plan was 3M's 1099 urethane adhesive. It bonded well to flexible rubbers, and I've seen it take minus 40 degree temperatures in its stride, even when flexed. Alas, the cold wasn't the issue. The heat was. Black rubber in the sun gets exceedingly hot, and this caused the cured adhesive underneath to soften and just give way. Before trying again, I did a stick test without any chemical surface preparation. All of these will bond fine to the deck, it's the PVC that matters. Here's what I found. The silicon pulled away too easily. Fail. The X8 hybrid was okay given its price, but the Bostic was better. Good enough. Over a large surface area this will do the trick. I also did do a blob of the 1099 urethane, and it did undeniably grip the PVC better, but there's no point if it comes off when the sun comes out. On the Bostic goes. On one side only so I can access the channel within. It's stiff enough so the other side won't flip up. There's some neatening up to do and sheathing to protect the cables as they enter the rigid trunking on the railings, but you get the picture. Having succeeded so monumentally, I come back down to earth and get my ego in check by degreasing and cleaning the rudder control rod, which I guess hasn't been done since Alan's birth. Quality brand new grease, clearing away the excess and ready for another 15 years turning Alan port and starboard on his unassailable path. Bye.